Good morning. I'd like to call this Public Works Procurement and Committee, Contracting Committee to order. Today's Wednesday, July 6th. Roll call, please. Calling the roll, Mr. Germana. Here. Mr. Miller. Here. Ms. Conwell. Here. Mr. Greenspan. Here. Ms. Simon. Ms. Simon is absent. There is a quorum. Okay, I want to apologize for being a few minutes late. Got caught in traffic. Mm -hmm. Okay, any public comment related to the agenda? Uh, no, Mr. Chair, no one is signed in. Okay. Approval of the minutes. Motion, Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Minutes are approved. Okay. 0107. Resolution number 2016-0107, making an award on requisition number 36580 to Burton Scott Contractors in the amount not to exceed $8,929,682.81 for County Airport Runway 624 Safety Area Improvement Project number two. Good morning. Sorry. Uh, Michael Dever with the Department of Public Works. Um, this is uh, uh, the second phase of a four-phase project for the county airport. Uh, the bids were opened on March 31st. Uh, Eleven proposals were pulled. Uh, two were submitted for review. Uh, this project includes the rehabilitation of full-depth reconstruction of the existing runway at our county airport. The activities include uh, a phased pavement removal, milling, excavation, grading, placement of an aggregate base, and bituminous concrete, new under drains, and electrical improvement. The duration of the contract is going to be four months. Uh, we hope to have it substantially completed by November 28th. Um, the, uh, the bidder for this was the Burton Scott uh, uh, paving contractor who has done numerous projects for us throughout the county here. Uh, and I'm here to answer any questions. Okay. We've heard this before. Okay, let's start with, with the... Just, just a question on the funding source. I see, rounded to $9 million, roughly 90% is... Uh, well, we're going to upfront the money and then get reimbursed 90%. From the FAA, so our true net out of pocket is ten percent. It's ten percent, and actually, the FAA or the ODOT FAA has now uh, agreed to pay for half of our ten percent. Okay. So now it's down to five percent. Actually, is the county's but responsibility. That's where we upfront the money getting it reimbursed. That's correct. Separate. We're uh, waiting FAA. As soon as the, this process, the the grant is supposed to come in fairly soon here, and we have twelve days to turn it around to then uh, for the grant to be awarded to us for all the signatures and whatnot. So um, we're hoping that we can get a, a second um, reading suspension approval of this item for uh, the um, meeting next week. Okay, thank you. Mr. Miller. Mr. Chairman, Director, uh, how did the, uh, the bid price compare to the engineer's estimate? Um, I'm sorry, I, I don't. One second. Yeah, so the engineer's estimate for the project was 9,527,000, and, and the bids came in at 8,929,000. Okay, so it was a little bit under. That's correct. And uh, do you have any sense as to why? Uh, 11 were p pulled, but only two bids were submitted. Uh, there's a tight timeline on the project itself. Uh, basically, a substantial portion of the work has to be completed in a 30-day period because we are closing the airport. We've worked this out with the tenants, and our intent is for the project to commence. Uh, if the grant comes in uh, the first week of August and be completed before Labor Day, um, it's, it's just a challenging timeline, and we know Burton Scott, they have uh, experience in this type of work, and uh, uh, we're very comfortable with uh, this contractor. And since this is heavily 
federally funded? Does this fall under the federal uh, DBA provisions? Yes, it does. Actually, there is a DBA a DBE goal on the project of 12%. Uh, and uh, the contractor has submitted a utilization statement and a letter of intent that they've actually exceeded that goal. Okay. Ms. Conwell. No questions at this time. They were asked already. Okay, so we want, uh, you'd like to have this second reading suspension. Please, Mr. Chairman. Okay. So I'll move that this goes to the full council under second reading suspension. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and, and seconded. May I ask one more question? Sure. Any, uh, any other questions? Mr. Miller. Uh, Director, uh, so this item was provided for in, in the capital plan. Is that correct? Yes, it is. And uh, with it coming in under budget plus the fact that the federal government's doing 95% instead of 90%. Does this, uh, Does this provide us a little surplus in the capital fund? Well, since it did come in under, there would be a surplus. But at the same time, we do not want to move that surplus until the project is completed, just in case there could be some unforeseen conditions that may <coughs> arise, but we don't anticipate that. provides us the potential to uh, to have something to work with in case something else goes over or, or or we need to do another project or something. Yes, that's correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, any, any final questions? Okay, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. Thank you. 107. Second reading suspension. 119. Resolution number 2016-0119, declaring that public convenience and welfare requires slab replacement for Fitch Road Culvert 02.23 over Root Ditch in the city of North Olmstead. Total estimated project cost $250,000. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Dave Marquardt from the Department of Public Works. Um, Thank this project you. is the Fitch Road Culvert 2.23 over Root Ditch in the city of North Olmsted. Uh, the scope of the work um, for the uh, replacement, uh, the load rating analysis uh, that was uh, done on the culvert revealed that the top slab of the culvert <clears throat> was not capable of supporting legal highway loads. Uh, as it exists, the remainder of the structure is in fair condition. Uh, so the project uh, anticipates replacing the top slab of the culvert uh, to achieve the uh, allowable highway loadings. Uh, the project itself is located in Council District 1. Uh, the estimated cost for the replacement of the top slab is 250000 which includes 50,000 for design. Uh, the construction is anticipated for 2017. The uh, project is funded uh, with our county local culvert program for 2017. And the funding for the project will be 60% county road and bridge funds and 40% North Olmstead for the design portion of the project. Uh, it will be 80% county road and bridge funds and 20% North Olmstead for the construction. And the, uh, we request your approval to proceed with the project. And I'll be glad to answer questions. Yeah, I, I see that uh, It's 76% and 24%. That's kind of unusual. We normally don't don't see that, but I understand it's a, it's a combination of uh, maybe the final price with the design 40% coming from North Olmstead. Is that correct? Nicole English from Public Works. That's our local culvert program. We do the 60-40 for design. 
80 okay. 20 for construction yeah. so I'm guessing it's just a combo when you add them up we come up with those odd percentages okay. but that's the that local culvert program where the cities have to agree that they want to participate uh, okay. in it thank you mr. Kennel uh, to through the chair to mr. Marquette the legislation says something different it says the 76 percent from the county Ridge road road and bridge fund and then on the uh, sheet that you read from um, I, I think they combine the design and the construction to get the 76 when they wrote this resolution so this is correct 190,000 is from the county and 60,000 is from North Olmstead it's just divided the way we calculate that is is the design portion and the construction portion okay and the uh, Contract and project information was not listed. So who's who won the contract? No, this is just our welfare and convenience to start the project. Okay, and so this is also stated as a new county project. So it's the first time that we did it. Yeah, the culvert was built in 1979, and we don't have any record of any rehab that was done to it. And so I'm just curious, how is, how was it determined that the slab needed to be replace uh, in recent history there's a new requirement for the way they do load ratings of uh, structures and this was uh, I believe about three years ago uh, the load rating analysis was done on it uh, when they did that they found that the the top structure was deficient in terms of its uh, capability of supporting highway loads so that's what initiated the uh, repair of this so when, when you say they they found meaning the county public yes. works going around on their on their annual assessments yes it's one of the structures that we do inspection annual inspections of all right thank you okay mr. Greenspan or mr. Miller mr. Miller uh, mr. chairman uh, my question is, uh, since this project is for less, not more than 250000 is this uh, is this one where we're going to allow contractors to apply for a waiver on the, on the, uh, on the bonding? Yes, there's a potential for that. Uh, we will review it for seeing if it fits that process. We haven't determined it yet, but we will look at it for that. Okay. Mr. Greenspan. Just a question. So it was determined that this obviously needs to be repaired, you know, repaired, replaced, but it's not going to commence for another year. Are, are, we, sh are we pretty confident that the road will last, that this, will, this uh, repair is not needed before? Yeah, the road has a reduced load limit, so okay. uh, it, it'll last. It'll yes. last. Okay. All right, great. All right, thank you. Okay, so then since it's not going to be starting until 2017, we could go through your readings, I, I assume. Yes. Okay. Okay, any, uh, any further questions? Uh, just one. If, if it's not being started to 2017, uh, and it was already determined three years ago that it was needed, what's the safety of that? Uh, once it's posted, it, the loadings that can go across it are safe at that point. So uh, the bridge, the culvert has been posted. Uh, no one's allowed to exceed those legal loads. Uh, it's safe under those conditions. Okay, so it's okay. I'll leave it there. Okay. Uh, since it's your district, you want to make the motion? Yeah. I'll make a motion. We um, recommend resolution 2016-0119 to the full council for uh, second reading. Second. Been moved and seconded. Any final questions? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Okay, 119 goes to the full council for second reading.
Resolution number 2016-0120, making an award on requisition number 36701 to Carvo Companies in the amount not to exceed $1,211,143.20 for 2016 Operations Resurfacing Program Group 2, located in various municipalities. Uh, Dave Marquardt, again from the Department of Public Works. Uh, this project is the 2016 Resurfacing Operations Group 2. Uh, it includes uh, Eastland Road, Foles Road, uh, from the Berea South Corporation line to Bagley Road in the city of Berea. Uh, that um, first piece of the, the Group 2 is in Council District 5. Uh, Turney Road from is the second portion. Uh, it's Turney Road from Hathaway to Garfield Heights East Corporation line in the city of Garfield Heights. Uh, that section is in Council District 8. Uh, the scope of the work includes uh, removing the existing asphalt concrete wearing course, uh, repairing the deteriorated base course, uh, and removal and replacement of deteriorated curb and abutting drive aprons. Uh, the construction of uh, uh, that goes back on will be a uniform three-inch asphalt concrete overlay, uh, an installation of ADA-compliant curb ramps, and other related improvements, uh, casting adjustments, and so on. The bids were opened on March 29th. Uh, 2016, eight proposals were pulled from OPD. Six bids were received. Uh, the Office of Procurement and Diversity set a 30% SBE goal. Uh, the contractor met the SBE goal. However, uh, they were determined to be non-compliant because they didn't sign the SBE-1 form. Um, it was determined that in accordance with uh, SBE price preference, an SBE non-compliant bidder is not ruled out based on SBE compliance. Um, so in essence, that still uh, permitted the bid to go to uh, the low bidder, uh, who is Carvo Excavating or I'm sorry, Carvo Companies. The engineer's estimate for the project was 1.46 million. Uh, we are recommending award to the lowest and best bidder, Carvo Companies, incorporated in the amount not to exceed $1,211,143.20. Uh, that bid is approximately 17% under the engineer's estimate. Uh, we're anticipating construction to commence uh, approximately August 1st and be substantially complete uh, December 1st, a period of about four months. Uh, motor vehicle $7.50 license tax funds in the amount of $1,031,894 and one cent are available to fund the contract. Uh, the uh, funding, the Turney Road uh, section has 63% uh, funding with Cuyahoga County, uh, funding from the 750 Vehicle License Tax Fund, and 37% is funded from Issue 1, Ohio Public Works Commission. Uh, Eastland Foles Road uh, involves 100% Cuyahoga County funding from our 750 vehicle license tax fund. Um, and we would like to request uh, approval on second reading suspension of rules. Uh, if there's any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. I'm wondering where the heck this has been. I mean, if if this was approved the March 29th, and now we're looking for second reading suspension. So we had April, May, June. E yes, because it involved OPWC, we couldn't award the contract and, until 
uh, after the beginning of July. Ah, good reason. Yeah, <laughs> okay. we couldn't get ahead of the game. And second reading suspension, we actually... Oh, I apologize. The bid due date was April 5th. Okay. But again, we couldn't uh, award the contract until after July 1st. Law department uh, has no problems with not signing the SBE form. This, this that's a little bit unusual. I'm just I just want to make sure. I am sure. not familiar with this particular situation, but I'm sure Lenora got legal advice for that. <laughs> Good morning, Lenora Lenora. Lockett. Good afternoon, Office of Procurement and Diversity. For the SBE, the to document their good faith effort, there are three forms. The SB1 form is their actual certification by the vendor that they, do, that they do not discriminate. It's required that they sign it. SB2 is when they sign themselves and the bottom half is signed by the vendors that they're gonna subcontract. SB3 is their good faith effort if they do not reach the goal. In this case, Carvel did not sign the the SB1, which is their certification that they have not discriminated in their practices to get the bids. So there are rulings that they were not compliant. However, they did have the SBE2 signed that showed that they were willing to subcontract and had agreements with the subs that exceeded the goal. The goal was 30%. They had documentation of subcontracting to 30.62. Uh, because on bids, the county has the price preference that says that within a certain range based on when you receive the lowest bid that complies with everything except the SBE. If that if there's not a vendor within that range, the price preference that also complies and complies with the SBE, then you overlook the SBE goal. So in this case, their bid was 1.2. That on our price preference is between 1 million and 3 million. So there's an 8% price preference. So that would have brought the range that we can go to find an SBE compliant bidder to something like 1.308. Then the second lowest bidder, Chagrin Valley, is at 1.335. So Carvo, based on the price preference, is still eligible for the award. Okay. So in a way, it was a technicality. They, they've submitted bids before, and they've signed the um, non-discrimination, the covenant of non-discrimination. So we believe it was an oversight, but that is one of the forms that is required that you sign. There's no one contesting this. No, no other bidder that's contesting it. No, the only bidder, the second lowest bidder, Chagrin Valley, was at 1.335. And our price preference is part of our documentation. They're outside those limits, so. Okay. I just wanted to clear that up. Any other questions? <laughs> I was just wondering if if I could request the uh, the list from um, the beginning of the year of all the various contractors that have <clears throat> for road and bridges that have won bids because Carvel has come bet uh, before us quite a bit. Yes, we can provide that list of contractors from the beginning of the year mm -hmm. who have been awarded contracts. I will get you that list. Okay, any other questions? Mr. Miller? <coughs> Just an observation. I think, I think we were fortunate if, if the uh, second bidder had had come in at 1,308, we would have uh, had to pay an additional $97,000 based on a technicality, as they would have fallen within the price preference. And, and uh, I think uh, y you know, we want the bidding process to be uh, 
legal and airtight and, and, and proper as, as it was, but uh, I think we need to uh, make sure that the bid documents are, are clear and easy to follow so that we don't, we don't have technical errors which uh, result in us uh, not being able to take advantage of, of the lowest and best bid. So uh, I express a little bit of concern about that. But in this case, we came out well because uh, as you say, they uh, they signed the documents for the 30.6. 30 we uh, we uh, we have a bidder that uh, that is essentially uh, SBE compliant, although from a technical standpoint they're not. So we kind of get the best of both worlds. Thank you. Okay, I'll make a motion that this goes to the full council under second reading suspension. Is there a second? One more question. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Further questions, Mrs. Conwell? Just wondering how does it stand now? So since they didn't do the form, we won on the price preference and they stated on form two that they would be willing to subcontract. Do we know that they have the full intention to subcontract? Their bid stands as submitted. In their bid, they submitted that they were subcontracting to these vendors. All right, thank you. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, just want to explain that uh, Mr. Greenspan had another meeting, and we still have a quorum, so uh, he is excused. It's been moved and seconded for second reading suspension. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. So that's 120, goes to uh, the full council. Recommendation, second reading suspension. Any, uh, any other public comment unrelated to the agenda? No, Mr. Chair, no one has signed in. Okay, previous, go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. Miller, question? You might be dealing with the same thing. Okay, um, because of the uh, Republican National Committee convention, uh, I said at the, the last council meeting that um, we may have a, a public works meeting on the 13th, but uh, it's been recommended that we move that to the 14th, and I just wanted to see if we move the, the meeting to the 14th, if there'd be any any problems of getting the quorum. What, what time? 10 o'clock on the 14th. I'm sorry, but the 14th is really very bad for me. I have... Uh, a big deal with the Arizona Alliance that uh, that Executive Judas is supposed to be tired of with me. That's not a good scheduling for me. I'm okay. Okay, we'll we'll, we'll check with uh, Ms. Simon and uh, Mr. Greenspan to see. Uh, I know Gene. Uh, was really pushing for us to, to have it on the 14th so everything could be ready um, instead of the, the, the morning after the, the council meeting. So we'll check uh, and it'll be, it'll be announced. Do you want to, um, just to make a suggestion, Mr. Chair, uh, well, I'll be in a meeting, but uh, that Tuesday, I'm not having a, a committee. I don't know if that would would be bad for me on that Tuesday because I put another meeting, but maybe. Um... No, the, that Tuesday is before the meeting. The meeting is on oh, Tuesday. Oh, okay. So you have to. So be we're going to have it the next time. morning, uh, and then it was suggested we go to the fourteenth. All right. Okay. All right, Mr. Chair, I'm 
I'm not avail I'm not aware of any other meeting scheduled that day and if we could have it in the early afternoon instead of ten o'clock in the morning Thursday would work for me. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Chair, I know that finance may be meeting that Thursday as well. After your meeting, if you chose to meet on Thursday, the fourteenth. What time is their meeting? Uh, they're thinking of one o'clock right now. Okay. Well, I'm good. I don't need another person. Okay. We'll see, and we'll we'll see if we have a quorum. Okay. okay for uh, the ten o'clock, and then I'm going to be out of state for the following week. So, Mr. Miller, if something comes up, you will be able to call a, a meeting. Okay. I will take care of it. Okay. Thank you for uh, your uh, attention. And uh, that concludes our agenda. So this meeting stands adjourned. Stands adjourned.